You're listening to Rev Up, a podcast about faith, family, and moto. I'm John Parkinson, president of Panic Rev Ministries. And I'm Zach Cummins, former Supercross racer. We're sitting down each week to talk with professional athletes about the unique crossroads of Christian life and action sports to offer you a view into the motivations that drive those at the top. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rev Up. Um, I'm John Parkinson with Zach Cummins, um, here for another week. Uh, what's going on, man? How are things going going over at home? What's going on uh, in, in in the world of Zach? Uh, much of the same, really, right? Just uh, staying home for the most part, uh, reading, continuing to, like we talked about last week, just trying to better myself as much as I can while I'm here. Uh, the other day, I think uh, earlier this week, went over to the grandparents' house and uh, helped put in some new flooring there. So got to work on that. Last week, I did uh, some hardwood flooring at my sister's house. So sharpening up my handyman skills, maybe that's my future career. career. Maybe, maybe future career path would be a, an interesting way to use that degree. <laughs> um, but Hey, I, I'm, I'm not above it, man. I mean, I, I've done some construction in my past. I'm not afraid of it if that's what comes my way. That's so funny. yeah. How about you? Um, man, camp revs coming up. We got uh, Texas camp here in roughly two weeks to a week and a half. Uh, um and uh it is go time so really trying to get things dialed in for camp um as i've mentioned before uh everything was put on hold for so long and now it is uh a go and now everything seems like it is fast forward and uh struggle time so uh trying to get everything situated trying to get uh camp uh going and get some people there and um it's rough with everybody being in utah for the race because now like with with trainers that usually come Ah, out whether it be trey or shane or anyone like that they are not coming yeah Uh, no one can leave yeah that's crazy i didn't even think of that so um so you know certain things like that is is a little bit of a bummer but uh i'm excited for camp and getting things dialed in there um, on a personal note, uh, me and, and my brother, his son, and, and my youngest son heading out this weekend for, for a BMX race in Arizona. Um, it'll be uh, first big race after this whole thing for us. So uh, that's exciting. Other than it's supposed to be like 110, uh, not looking forward to that. <laughs> That'll be good. Put the kids to the test. Yeah, maybe. Or, or, or send them to the hospital. <laughs> Wow, you don't want to go there. <laughs> Shoot. But, but yeah, uh, just trying to get things dialed in, man, having some fun and, and uh, getting back to life. So it's, it's been cool. Yeah. Um, Speaking of uh, difficult conditions, we've had two races, two Supercross events since we last uh, came on here. Both wild, just hmm. wild events. I don't even have a better word for it right now, I don't think. Yeah. Um, again, like just talking about the tracks, man, what different – surfaces we've had uh dust bowl to a, a, a nice pretty loamy maybe not loamy but tacky loamier um, for sure yeah on sure. the loamy side yeah um to this last race being a mud bog really right and uh just seeing uh, the same location having three different tracks um i'm interested to see uh um what what the next few rounds look like too it's been crazy it's been super crazy i mean i think on a different note i think i'm out two chipotle dinners now right what i mean i think we can count ac ac announced that he's not going to be coming back for supercross yeah so i owe you Uh, another chipotle there go ahead uh uh, i was thinking about it right and i we were making some bold bold moves and and i was going to let you get off the hook with the with a cooper uh a win okay i was going to change that and say he gets two wins you want to change that? You think you he wins again? I think he wins again. After I mean, sure, time, I'll take that because that gives me. I mean, as long as we're not double or and nothing, then we'd be even, right? I don't want to double or nothing on it. I mean, but I'll, I'll, if you're just extending it to another win, that works yeah, for me. Yeah, let's do that. I'm good okay. with that. Right? Are we calling the last one a wash though, or no? What's that? Like, if I don't extend this right now, if I don't agree to these terms, do I still owe you a Cooper a Cooper oh, yeah. dinner? Oh, yeah. Okay, then yeah, then there's I have nothing to lose. Absolutely, I'm on board yeah. with it. Let's yeah, make yeah. it three. No, 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 no. Let's not push this. Uh, <laughs> I think dude, Eli's on a different level, but I do think Cooper is more. a force right now, man. Jeez. Cooper I mean, that was awesome. that 450 race was one of the best races I've seen um, under just crazy conditions. Really, yeah. really difficult track. Really difficult to adjust to a track with so little practice time with the way the schedule yep. was. Um, with it pouring rain at the beginning of the 250 race and then letting up. 
uh, creates that kind of, it looked like there was slosh mud in certain areas, tacky mud in other areas. Um, so yeah, I mean, just adjusting to that track, I think we saw it got really one lined or kind of not one line, but, but uh, certain areas of the track got packed down, yeah. right? Um, which made lines not very plentiful, you know? Um, and the line that was good, I mean, in the corner before the, the finish, we saw there was one rut that was good for 80% of the day. And then it got so deep that they started having to go down into the slosh below it yeah. to make the turn. Uh, I think the way the rest of the field rode the track is what I would say usually is about the best you can ride a track like that. Yeah. And then Cooper and Eli lapped basically the whole field by just riding it at a completely another, like a whole different level. Yeah, those two were 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 out of control. I was watching like the early stages, Zach out in the lead. Yeah. Um, you know, Zach Zach's a buddy, but I think he was holding Cooper back for a few laps. And True. then and then stinking uh uh Eli triples yeah, it's been three, three, three through that and, section. Yeah, and just I was like, "Holy smokes, he, he's yeah. on it." He's Cooper he, was he, ready to res- Cooper was ready to respond to that though by not busting out the third three, but then double singling to the inside of the turn yep. before the triple, still pulling out the triple, maybe using his his size to his advantage in that sense, right? Being a bit lighter um, and yeah. maybe not having as much bite control, uh, probably maybe wouldn't have been as consistent pulling out the the takeoff to that last three looked pretty iffy. Right, so yeah. if he got a, a kind of a bad kick, it would have been a lot worse for him than Eli. For uh, sure, but he could use his his lighter kind of weight advantage to get over that triple. And then there was that whole next section. I think Eli would go out wide and just carry a ton of momentum. Really, the track accentuated the difference in their riding styles and their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but both of them, like I said, just rose to the top. Um, yeah, I mean, what a, what an awesome race! What what three radically different races we've had, or yeah, three races now? Yeah. Um, it's been insane. The, the, the East coast race also, I think you and I both rooting for, for Shane and, and, you know, not hiding that in any way. Yeah. Um, it was a, a roller coaster of emotions after that, sure. that first one. Um, I also, yeah, I mean, yeah, to ahead. be, to be real, I mean, everybody's listening, watching and, uh, before the restart, I, I was like, man, titles wrapped up really, yeah. really to a point. Right. And um, I think mentally too, like we've talked about that mentality of, I got you covered and, and kind of pushing chase into this defeated kind of position. The start of that first main event for the two fifties really would have driven that home, right? right? Push him off the track, put him under pressure. And then he kind of crumbles in that situation yeah. just with the way it worked out. Not saying he, you know, crumbles by default, sure. but it's what happened. Uh, the mentality difference going forward and huge too. Yeah. Yeah, but we can only control what we can, and that's kind of out of everybody's control. And and uh, I hope Garrett's good from yeah. the crash. Um, hopefully, he could come back. Uh, I, I I really haven't even heard what what was wrong. I had heard there was maybe some internal stuff with a lung or something. I think I saw on Instagram. Um, I don't know the fullest extent of it. it looked like yeah. maybe he hurt his back when he was on the ground, but it's hard to tell. Uh, Garrett, I, I know him a little bit just from being around the pro circuit guys and, and having a good, uh, good relationship with all of them. Really nice kid. And, and, and I knew him from amateurs as well. He's a bit younger than me, but was around the same tracks. Good kid. And it's a super bummer to see, especially, uh, considering I, I man, after he won at Daytona, couldn't yeah. help, but think going into outdoors, he was going to be a, a you know, a One front runner. Yep. Yeah. Which would have just been a radical breakthrough for him to experience and to open up his potential into next year's supercross. For sure. uh, hopefully he'll be able to get back out there without missing too much of the beginning of the season and, and still show his, his worth there. For sure. Um, but like I said, you can, only, you can only control what, what we can. And they as, far as, those, yeah, as far as Shane and those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's out of their control. And, and, it's frustrating. Shane kept his composure yeah. really well to still get a good start and fire. Yep. Um, and then runs into a lapper, whether he could have done something different. I don't really know. Right. Like you don't know what that guy's going to do. Yeah. Uh, the only other rut that was there was an outside rut. So if he goes outside, does chase go in there and, and run it in on him? Uh, the inside seemed a little bit sloppy. Um, but we are where we are. It happened. From, um, from watching it, I watched it back a couple of times. It's just the way I tend to watch races, like with the remote ready in hand to just rewatch things. Um, yeah. But it looked to me like that there was that kind of inside line. There was a really deep rut through it. I think that was the rut Shane had been taking. And then there was a real shallow one that you had to go yeah. pretty slow to um, or through to cut out of and run down below. Uh, I think uh, it was Cody shock. I think is who it was. Right. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it was And his first main event. It's a tough situation when you have leaders coming up behind you, especially in the mud like that. I think he probably was making an effort to get down to the inside and get out of sure. the way. 
uh, Shane assumed that he would still be racing forward, which is the, I mean, as you gain experience and unfortunately I've been lapped, you, you realize, dude, just race as hard as you can straight forward. If they're going to, you know, if they're that much faster than you, they're going to find a way around and, and you'll be consistent. So yeah, him kind of running that lower line. I think Shane expected him to take the, the main racing line. It is a bummer. I don't, I don't by no means blame him for it. I mean, it, yeah. to me, it felt entirely Shane's fault in that, you know, maybe a little bit more patience. Obviously, a little bit more patience would have been better. You know, he would have been better off getting passed by Chase right there than, than falling over. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, you know, so here we are. Two rounds left for them. Um, one, one round just East Coast and then a shootout. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's going to go down to the wire. Um being that they're three points between Shane and Chase. Chase has, again, got three-point lead. Um, again, here we are. Going to be it, fun. Going to be exciting. It doesn't um, change too much, I don't think, right? No. Like, I mean, they kind of – I guess if Shane had won and, and Chase got second, that gives him three. And then if he won the next one, he'd have six, and he wouldn't have to win the last one. Sure. But otherwise, they're kind of in a position where they just – whoever Swap. beats the other guy – as long as you beat the other guy in both the next two races, you win the championship. And it's kind of that simple, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, unless they're, you know, 14-15 and 14-15 both right. races, then they'll, right. you know, be a point apart. But yeah. otherwise, the, the front finisher in the next two, as long as it's the same guy, will take the championship. Um, it's exciting. It's, it's probably, I would think for both of those guys, a, a good headspace to go into this little, you know, week-long break that they have. Yeah. Uh, I think both of them handle that well of, Hey, it's entirely on my shoulders. My fate is in my hands. For sure. And, and, uh, here we are, uh, with the West West coast guys going back racing. Um, uh, another tight chase, um, 13 points separating three guys, uh, Ferrandis, Cooper and, and, and Forkner. Yep. Um, that should be fun too. I think the the obviously bigger point spread there, right? But also, uh, it's kind of the positions seem more interchangeable in sure. that series. So the bigger point spread, it probably will fluctuate uh, by by larger gaps, you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas as Chase and Shane uh, until until Colt got into the season again had yeah. been one two one two kind of uh, speed wise. Uh, on the West Coast, I feel like Justin Cooper could win the next one and and. Forkner could get second, and then all of a sudden the gap is down to one for Ferrandis. Um, it can, I think, change things will change really quick there. Yep, uh, we'll see though. I mean, who, yeah, it who should be fun. Any, who knows how fitness will play into that? Because I don't know. I, I know. I think last week we talked about how I, I think um, Ferrandis is good on those conditions, but yeah. I wonder how he is at the altitude and with the heat. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Um, the dude uh, from the outside seems like uh, he's got a good program and and uh, being able to talk to Shane and, and that type of stuff uh, about Ferrandis, like uh, he kind of likes running his own program, but yeah. uh, he's solid. Right. So, um, I mean, again, you got two, two Yamaha boys out front uh, with, with uh, Forkner chase, chasing those two guys. Um, obviously there's no team tactics there between uh, Cooper and Ferrandis. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, Forkner's got his, got his work cut out for him. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, all of them are fit and ready, and, and I know we, we've talked about that in the weeks past, and I feel like I've kind of brushed over some of the uh, other stuff that plays into that, like we've seen surface with, with Roxon, right? Yep. Yeah, big, big fades this week, but also an acknowledgement that kind of that illness that he's been dealing with attacked his lungs at a certain point. He's maybe dealing with some asthma. Um, that is in no way indicative of his, his fitness or how yeah. hard he works to be ready. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it seems like anyone in the field could be beset by something like that. We've seen yeah. Jason Anderson, who we expected that from, really go the other way by sure. just, it seems like, doing everything he can to be prepared, practicing at altitude for weeks before then, um, just taking as extensive of measures as possible. Yeah. So it's interesting to have kind of that complicating factor in the racing on top of everything. As we've seen, racing is going to be great no matter what, even if in the same stadium every time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, the West Coast guys going racing? And uh, we got a positive COVID test, man. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. I guess we, we knew it was going to happen eventually, right? I think it was, from what I've heard, it was a racer, not a, a crew member. Right. Um, which kind of narrows the margin there as far as the possibility of that happening. Um, my understanding is that the rider is not racing, that they've been, been yeah. sent away. And, and uh, you know, you have to be sent away for at least two weeks, I imagine. So. Yeah. 
there goes the rest of, of that rider's season. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, uh, I, 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 I don't think it's a title contender uh, of what I've. Yeah, word, really word is that it's a life. word is that it's a privateer, right? Yeah. Un, unnamed privateer. Yeah. So uh, we might not even know uh, who that is, but they're, they're going racing uh, with or without them. Right. <laughs> it sounds like without them. So I imagine that'll surface if it's a, a you know, notable enough privateer when we realize sure. that, that homies health, you know, healthy as far as we can tell from the outside yeah. and not competing. Yeah. Um, it's tricky. So, it's tricky. It's the whole thing, right? Staying in Utah. We, we were talking about this uh, a bit earlier I, with everyone staying in Utah and having to be within the state of Utah and then assuming that, you know, that one test is good to maintain you throughout. It's a complicated issue because transmission rates of the virus have been climbing in Utah. Um, certainly less talked about right now with the media and the news of, of everything going on with uh, the riots and the, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, coronavirus has kind of slipped from the forefront of the mind for a lot of people. But, but transmission rates are, are still pretty high in Utah, to my understanding. Yep. So it, it makes sense that they, on the racing side right now, are just going to do everything they can to keep it outside of that space and try to get through these next couple of weeks um, and then regroup and, and refocus. On that yeah. same note, and it might be controversial to bring up, there may have been a media guy kicked out is what we're hearing. Um, yeah. Swap, swap Moto might have been exiled from, from the pits. Yeah. Um, again, m- I don't know all details, but, uh, and I know, uh, some of the other media guys are, are talking and probably even getting with, uh, some of the athletes, whether they're mountain biking or whatever, right. Going, sure. going on hikes, yeah. Yeah. uh, because really they're friends. They hang yeah, out. Yeah. It's a small community. Yeah. We all have, have media guys that are friends and racers and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, for whatever, right. Like, uh, Swap has put up some videos of him doing interviews and that type of thing. Uh, I don't know if that's the reasoning or if he got caught in the pits. Um, uh, but never, nonetheless, uh, he, he's not supposed to be coming back to a race. Uh, <laughs> the, the word on the streets are. <laughs> so um, so for, for the most part, they're taking that part of things serious, right? Like I, I had question in that. Yep. And how are you going to police that? Um, and here we are. So. Uh, someone like myself, and I, I know there are people, especially within our, our demographic, that, that maybe don't see it the same way I do. It makes me happy. Um, I'm not out to get swap or, or trying sure. to, to push him out in particular by any means. Um, he's always been perfectly kind to me. But, uh, but just to see that, that we're taking these things serious, right? Um, that Can you hear that? I don't even know what that is. Should I talk through it? Uh, at this point, I'll just, just wait. wait now. Yeah, I don't want to. Sorry. You're good. I didn't even, there's a home phone in a box in here hooked to a cord. I don't know. <laughs> For real, it's in a big box. It's never been used. That's, That's insane. Funny. Yeah. That's sorry. Funny. I know that'll be hard, no, to you're cut, good. but I don't know. I didn't know that phone could ring. It freaked yeah. me out in my head too. I lost my train of thought. You're good. Um, what was I saying? Uh, that you're, you're kind of glad nothing against swap. Oh, um, should I start that over then? Sure. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. So my, from my perspective, it, it's good to see that they're taking it serious and there are actually repercussions for, for not following these guidelines. Um, and they're trying to keep the community as safe as possible because there are definitely people within the community that are at higher risk than others. Um, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like to know that it's not just a, a lip service or a facade of, hey, we're, we're doing our best. Um, but then behind wraps, they're not. Yeah. And I think we heard that last week talking with Freddie, right? Freddie said it really is pretty serious and they will, yeah. they will suggest that you step away from each other and, and things of that nature. Um, I think it should encourage us all to, to try to be better about that in our day-to-day sure. lives too, not just throw caution to the wind. For sure. Um, yeah, uh, uh, something else kind of interesting happened a, a few days ago uh, before the last round. Uh, title contender Chase Sexton lost a teammate. He decided to uh, mm-hmm. uh, – Martin decided to bow out of the series um, to keep his uh, 250 – um, eligibility open for next year. Uh, what are your thoughts, feelings there? I understand it. Um, I don't, I don't balk at it too much. I, I know some people are, are disappointed in it. Um, and you know, those rules are in place for a reason, right? And, um, I think we see guys like, uh, Martin Davalos, who I, I think Martin, I mean, he had to have hung back at a certain point deliberately, but I think Martin also was kind of just a benefactor of fluctuating rules that yeah. always seemed to fit his circumstance. Sure. Um, and he didn't choose to move up until that very end there. Um, yeah. 
but I, he had to have held himself back at some point, right? Yeah, there had to sure. have been something. I don't, I can't I'm think sure of exact... come back from an injury, but something like that. Prolonged yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, and we've seen that with other guys, right? We've seen sure. guys that are, that are injured that don't, don't rush back to catch the last race because it will point them out. Yeah. Uh, which, which in, in, in my, in my belief, that's perfectly fine. In yep. my belief, I don't even like the rule. Uh, we are in a business. Sure. Um, I, I, I get the rule. Okay. But if somebody wants to be a 250 career guy, why shouldn't he? Like, I, I think it, so it, also. I, the, I get the, winning a couple titles, right? Bump them up. But never yeah. winning a title, um, why can't I? Why, why, sh- why should I not be able to make a, make a living racing mm-hmm. that class? I, I, I think I agree, right? It's a big enough draw. It's, it's not really a preparatory class for right. the big leagues. This is not the minors that we're talking about. It's right. very different, right? I get a rule like that to point you out of the minor leagues. Hey, we need to filter in new guys. And I think that's the idea with implementing a rule like that is, hey, the lights class is for the young talent to get their feet wet, to get themselves seen, and to move to the 450 class. Uh, we've been in a place for the last three or four years uh, maybe it's just my awareness within the sport, but it seems like it's been a newer place within the last three or four years. There's been a major shortage of r- rides available yeah. um, relative to the number of riders that, that are capable. Yep. Um, I think we I, I, see that more so than anywhere, in my opinion, with, with the Yamaha team right now, right? They have um, Barsha and Plessinger. And to my knowledge, I think Plessinger is contracted for another year for Supercross, which complicates it because then you have Ferrandis and McElrath that could both win championships and would need to move up if they did or when they do. What does Yamaha do? They can't have yeah. a five, five rider team. Um, so there, there is a shortage and it, it makes sense to say, hey, listen, if one of those guys wants to stay back and follow up his championship and earn a living, well, who are we to say that he can't? Uh, it's, it's tricky. I, I agree that Jeremy Martin is right now. There is no opportunity for him on a 450. Yeah. Where would he go? There isn't that door available. So, I mean, he could see through these last three races and do as well as he can and, and make whatever money comes with those podiums and then very well be out of a job next year. Right. Uh, the choice to stay back is the only choice to make at that point. Yep. Yeah. I fully support him. Like mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, this guy. Like, yeah, I wish he lined up to make to make the show better. But I Definitely. completely understand, and I just disagree with the ruling of yeah. why he's doing it. I think he should be able to race and um, race the 250 class next year as well, unless he wins the title or or what whatever that looks like. Um, you know, I, I've I've had open conversations with Shane about this very uh, situation where where he's at. Um, because at this point he has to go 450 racing no matter what um, next year. Um, and unless, he's in a, he's in a position. Change. He's in a position where you know not to be negative about it, but he's in a really difficult position even with a championship, right? Yes. Um, I mean, he kind of needs this championship and the outdoor championship to really get himself in the door somewhere big. Otherwise, yeah. everything seems pretty sealed up um, yep. without a lot of a lot of opportunity for him right now in that class. For sure. Yeah. yeah, it's tough, man. Uh, 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 as you mentioned, the 450 rides just aren't there. We um, could go back not- to, to old school. I think back in the day, I know like, I think Ryan Clark double classed it. Shorty, I think Shorty was the first guy to top five, double classing it, right? 250 yeah. and 450 same night. That'd be pretty crazy. Yeah. Get real yeah, lax. So- <laughs> so uh just a diff- difficult situation uh just to be clear i fully support jeremy martin in his decision yeah. um it's a business it's his career um if he goes racing he doesn't have a have a job uh next year because of uh, a technicality in the rule yeah. Yeah. um in this in this matter he's got a ride he's got a job somebody's and he's had he's had like what close to a year off right now and then just yeah. came back to racing and has had you know four races the whole series is what seven so he'll have a right. year off and then seven races and then be bumped out for it yeah, uh, yeah i agree i think the, the rules could use some finagling or you know just pushes a rider like himself to step out of the way and and for you sure. know give someone else the opportunity to shine uh something i noticed in points the other day right is so he's out right garrett is now out and rj is out there is potential for uh, Jalik Swole to move up to, I think, third in the championship if he finishes close enough to the front in these next two races. Um, yeah. I think he's at like 118 – or he's – no, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe uh, Hampshire's at 118. He's like 35 back from gotcha. Hampshire, something like that. So I yeah. think he needs like two-fourths around there. Two, two. Um, 
to get up to third. But dude, what an unbelievable opening season for him, especially from crashing at the first round and not even making the main event. Yeah, like for sure. Hero, hero opportunity for for Jalik. Yeah. Uh, One of my points of of bringing up the Martin thing is Mm. uh, Chase doesn't have a buddy to to gap uh, him and Shane. Uh, Shane kind of inherited round one a guy to to separate some some points hopefully yeah um with with colt um yeah. and he's been riding awesome yeah. uh, he's been putting putting in work and and uh leading uh and battling for 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 wins and podiums uh so i'm excited uh to one that he's back and he's able to help shane out and and, and uh separate uh chase and shane uh but i'm more excited to have him on the show today uh as our guest so at this time we're going to welcome uh colt nichols to the show colt how are you sir what's going on oh there we go oh we're good we're horizontal we're good (laughs) yeah colt's the first guy to come in horizontal i like it yeah on top of the stuff (laughs) what's going on out there man uh looks like you got some cool stuff behind you a little, little scenery back there how are things out in Utah? Oh, man, they are absolutely wonderful. I have uh, really been enjoying the time. We got the whole squad here in a uh, Airbnb house, and it's one of the coolest houses I've, I've probably been in. It's just – it's cool, man. Like our backyard, each morning we woke up and, you know, seen some deer running around in the backyard, and it's just – I mean, it's just beautiful. I love it here, and uh, I could I could move here. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> I really like it, man. It's, it's been a really, really cool trip so far. That's awesome. How is it having everybody in the, in the same house, dude? Like to me, that's a little chaotic. Has it been uh, pretty cool, like normal or, or what's that like? No, honestly, it's worked out a lot better than I even thought it was going to. Cause at first I'm like, dude, 16 people in a house. Like it's about to get wild. You know? But <laughs> So this house has three floors pretty much. The bottom's like the basement. There's like little game stuff down here. Then we have the middle where the, uh, the kitchen and all the stuff is. Then up top we have some more bedrooms and, uh, it's honestly, it, it's been one of the coolest things to kind of be around people more than just at the track. Like, Hey, how's the bike? Yeah, it's great. See you later. You know, then you come in and see them tomorrow. But here it's like, you get to get people in their own element. We can talk, we can discuss things. And, uh, I actually really feel like I'm getting to know the team better. Um, even Shane, like I haven't spent a whole lot of time with Shane outside of, you know, being at the track. So it's just, it's been a, that experience has been cool in itself. Just being able to talk and kind of conversate with these people and understand each other a little more. And uh, that's the part that I enjoy the most because I don't really like, you know, showing up and feeling like I don't know the people that I'm around or, you know, anything like that. So th- this has been a really cool experience to do all that. It's been nice. Is it, does it feel like it's, does it feel like it's uh, like racing focused all the time or is it kind of life as normal? Like, you know, after say in the afternoon on a Tuesday. Yeah, I would say life is normal. Um, Just because even the racing has been, you know, kind of not normal. (laughs) So like we would show up and, you know, especially the day races are are really throwing me for a loop kind of because we would race during the day. It seems like it should be an outdoor, but you're racing supercross. And then we come back and we all have a nice dinner and wake up and do it all again tomorrow, you know? So it's been, it's been a cool kind of aspect to kind of get people out of their own normal element of just being at the track, whether it's mechanics or, uh, team personnel or whatever and dude at night we're all sitting down here chatting or you know playing foosball or you know just being normal people and it has nothing to do with dirt bikes and I, I really really enjoy that side of things and uh, sometimes that kind of gets lost in translation a little bit when you're just kind of doing the monotony over and over so uh, I've been really enjoying it so far and I, I think that's what's made it so cool about this trip is the fact that we all are staying together I kind of like that. Yeah, I think that's huge. Honestly, like uh, you guys need that separation from from racing to my day to day life. I I don't need to be surrounded with the people I work with all the time. Yeah, obviously, you guys are, but you're able to yeah. separate that, and that's huge, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the part that I really enjoy, and not a whole lot of people can do that that great. You know, it's it's kind of dirt bikes or nothing, and. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of life to live after I retired from racing. And, you know, I I know that this is my life now. Sure. You know, I I put all my focus and attention into it, but I do know that there's a bigger picture and, um, you know, a bigger plan to just life in general besides racing dirt bikes. And um, I I think that helps me in a sense because I can focus on what I'm doing and know that, you know, I have this plan and everything doesn't always go to plan though. So, you know, you always got to kind of keep your mind open to other things and, uh, just try to enjoy other things in life other than 
trying to go there and win because you just can't win them all. Unfortunately, <laughs> you try to, but you just can't quite do that. So, um, yeah. yeah, just understanding life and people and, you know, trying to break boundaries with other guys and, you know, just stuff like that. It's been kind of a, a fun experience. That's awesome. Uh, uh, you guys had three rounds so far. Um, yeah. how has that been racing Sunday, Wednesday, back on Sunday? Like, has it been a gnarlier thing you expected or not as bad as you expected? Because in my mind, recovery was huge. Um, as a mm-hmm. fan, I've really enjoyed being able to watch two races in the week. It's been really cool, but I don't know yeah. from yeah. your guys' aspect, how has that been going? I honestly love it. I mean, kind of, we did a press conference, I think after the last race and, um, yeah, that question was kind of directed towards Cooper, uh, Webb, and he answered it pretty well by just being like, dude, we, we ride all the time and you know, we have a little less risk now because we're not at the practice track, just yeah. going through the laps, going through the laps. We actually get to line up, we get to race, which is what we like to do. I mean, we're competitors. We want to go compete. And, uh, that's the part that I missed the most. And I've missed racing already this year, you know, the first four or five rounds. So, for me, when they were like, hey, we're going to do three races in a week, I'm like, let's go. Like, that's, I'm excited <laughs> about that. You know, like, I really wanted to do that because I'm missing some racing anyway. And uh, the recovery has been, you know, something we all have kind of been paying attention to and making sure that we're slowing things down, you know, after the race Sunday to get prepared for Wednesday, then after Wednesday to get prepared for Sunday again. But uh, overall, it's been really good. I haven't had any issues with the altitude, which is nice. I was kind of worried about that coming in. But um Matt, I really like the schedule. I wish we could kind of keep doing it like that. It's kind of fun, really. Uh, I love racing, and I wish we could kind of do some more, to be honest with you. But we got two rounds left and make the most of them. I think the the risk thing you bring up is a really good point, too. I mean, I've, I know I've talked to people about that in the past of, like, from a spectator's uh, standpoint, it's really easy to not realize. Uh, the athletes are doing – I mean, you do, like, 10,000 laps throughout the season. You really yeah. get paid for, like, 120 of them. <laughs> yeah, but all honestly. of them are – just yeah. as risky, if not more risky at the practice laps, you know, cause you're trying to push that boundary and find that new, that new breakthrough. So, yeah, I mean, I get that. Like you guys are, and I imagine you're not riding really at all during the week now. It's just race, race, race. Every lap is, is getting paid for in a sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. Makes it kind of cool that way when you look at it like that, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. curious, I'm curious on the recovery side, are you guys doing anything like out of the normal trying to recover? Like, I mean, I think I saw a photo the other day of Dino, like jumping in a hyperbaric chamber. Um, which I know gets more oxygen in your blood. Are you guys doing anything like abstract trying to do it or just rest and recovery when you need it? Uh, just rest and recovery. Like we have a place here that we've been going to. Um, me and Shane have been going quite a bit, but it's just to do cryotherapy and they have a hyperbaric chamber there as well and uh, stuff like that. But I, I do all that stuff at home. So it's not out of the ordinary, you know, but it's sure. something that we're definitely making sure we're on top of now that we're here. Yeah. Um, because like I said, we're not really riding during the week. So that, yeah. that takes it down a lot. I mean, you don't realize how, um, a lot of people don't realize how much that takes it out of you. I think the, the mental stress, you know, of knowing you have to ride the next day yeah. is, is something that people don't really take into account either. And when you know, you don't have to do that, you can properly recover and be like, okay, we're racing Wednesday. I'm not going to ride Monday and Tuesday. Let's really, really chill and make sure we're recovered. And then time to go again on Wednesday, you know? So um, nothing really out of the ordinary, but just the same steps and just making sure that we're doing it a little more routinely now, you know, the yeah. stretching and the yoga and all that stuff, because normally you do that once or twice a week. And now it's like, you know, three or four times to make sure we're kind of good to go. But, um, no, we've, we've definitely slowed things down quite a bit, but I've, I've really enjoyed the schedule, man. It's been nice. Like, I know you can only speak for yourself, but like, uh, so you guys have done three rounds. Uh, the 450 guys will do seven in a row, right? Like, is is yeah. is the is this type of schedule something sustainable? Like, could you do this throughout a whole season uh, if if that was chosen to do w- w- um, with recovery and stuff? Yeah, yes and no. I think the seven race stretch is a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, I I think by you know by the time June 21st rolls around, I think that's our last round. Yeah. I'm sure the 450 guys are going to be like, okay, you know, like I'm ready for not to race on Wednesday again, you know, have yeah. a little break. But for us, I mean, we did three in a row and now we get to kind of, I, I wish we could have done maybe four or five, you know, and then just had mm-hmm. like that two week stretch and then, you know, maybe that week off and go back again on Sunday or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I like it and I don't think it's been an issue, but for the 450 guys, I could see it getting a little hairy at the end being like, sure. okay, I kind of, <laughs> kind of need a break, but um overall though i don't really know either because normally you would ride the same amount of time during the week anyway you know like right. a seven day stretch you're riding three times yep. which is essentially what you would do during the week i mean i know some guys maybe ride four so 
Um, so I, I don't know, you know, I don't know how a lot of the guys are looking at, at, yeah. at the schedule like that, but, um, I can only speak for myself and say that I like it. I'm a fan. I wish I could do it more. That's for sure. <laughs> it seems like also in a sport that, you know, just little injuries are so common as they are in supercross. Yeah. It yeah. seems like with such a rapid fire, you probably have guys missing larger stints. You know I mean? A guy that misses one weekend right now really has two weeks of recovery time to recover from whatever his small thing was yeah. in the race. That'd be four yeah. rounds. That dude's yeah. out of any championship right then. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you, that'd be you'd tough. essentially be done. So, yeah, the, the little bumps in the road would become yeah. big ones for sure, um, which would make it tough. But uh, at the same time, I mean, if you're on the other side where you're, you're lucky you're not dealing with anything, it's awesome yeah. because you can kind of just go through it and, you know, you're dialed in and good to go. And I, I can speak for the team too. And they're like, dude, we love the schedule. We come <laughs> in, we set the semi up, and then we don't touch it. You know, they don't have to unload yeah. and do all the yeah. stuff and pack up everything. So, I mean, I, I know they're they're huge fans of just staying in one place. That's for sure. So, and I get that side of things too. And it has been nice just back and forth to the same place. And um, you know, it's really really weird with no fans. Like when we leave the race, we're not worried about traffic or like yeah. anything. We just kind of hop in the truck and take off. You know, so uh, <laughs> that part's been been kind of weird with the whole thing too. But now it's been cool, man. I, I'm enjoying the time in Utah. It's been a very pleasant trip so far. That's awesome. Uh, talking a little bit about racing, like. Uh, this is this is your first three races of the season, really. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, it, it it's been. I mean, the first round was was was. Uh, it started out well, got a little bumpy there, uh, but things have been going awesome. And from from my viewpoint, uh, how do you feel about the first three rounds for yourself? Yeah, they've been a little. You know, kind of like you said, the first one was a touch rocky. Um, but overall, I was so happy. I mean, like I, I feel like I rode well all day. That was something that was. It was in my control because I got a bad start, and that's what happens when you get bad starts at times, you know. But at the same time, it was out of my control with someone coming over, and I just kind of ran right into them. So it just depends on how you look at that situation. But um, even once I got up, I felt like I rode well and was doing what I could with what I had. And uh, second, third round were – I mean, you never can complain about being on the podium. That's an awesome position to be in. But um, especially just the last Sunday, I felt like I, did, I didn't ride that well. I was a little disappointed in my performance once I – kind of caught up to Shane in the main event after, you know, he had a few bad laps after he crashed and kind of caught up to him and then put, put me in kind of a weird spot. So I'm like, well, mm. I can't really do anything right now. You know, uh, I'm not going to pass out. my teammate. Yeah. Clean I'm not going to pass my teammate right now. So <laughs> yeah. uh, just kind of a weird, weird deal there. But yeah. um, overall though, no, I'm, I'm happy with where we are. Like I said, I can't complain about being on the podium, but I want to be in the battle, you know, like I was Wednesday with Shane where we were kind of, right there the whole main event you know and I think I only finished maybe a second and a half or two seconds behind him and that's where I feel like I should be at least in the race whereas on uh, this past Sunday I felt like I was nowhere near anybody so that's kind of difficult but um, no, I'm happy we, we got a few more rounds to make it happen and I want to try to win one of these things before it's said and done so we'll see if we can do that and then I'll be really happy <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's been really cool to watch uh, you guys are racing the same same place uh, every week, but honestly, it's been three different tracks every week. Oh, completely different. I mean, I was shocked. That first race, it was 97 degrees while we were racing, and it was a dust bowl. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And then the Wednesday, simply just because it was a night race, and then we raced at like 10 o'clock at night. I mean, it was a really, really late race, but the yeah, track yeah. was awesome. And then we had the mudder. I'm like, dude, this is insane. <laughs> like completely different conditions for everything. So we definitely can't say that it was kind of the same thing over and over. We've had a plethora of things going on so far. So uh, I think it's made it fun, though, like cool for the fans, too, because that 450 race was unreal um, yeah. on Sunday. That was really, really cool. I wish fans could have been in there to, to witness that live. But, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely been some different conditions, which is kind of nice, honestly, changing it up a little bit. How has it been with the, the, the format changes too? Cause on that same note, right? Like they've been three really different scheduled races than we've ever seen. Yeah. Like the yeah. first day race. And I mean, I guess it didn't affect you cause you went straight from the heat, but they changed like the, the actual race schedule as far as like yeah. all the 250 stuff and all the 450 stuff. And then the next one was the latest night race we've had. And then yeah. this Monday was, was mud schedule. So that one really short practice. Like it's, yeah, a it's, it's it seems honestly crazy. It's, it seems really yeah, chaotic. it's been really, really weird. I mean, like yeah. the first one, we woke up, we had to leave the house here at five thirty, so we wake yeah. up at five, Dude. you know, to get yeah. there to do the track crazy. viewing at seven, yeah. and then we were done with everything by like three o'clock. I'm like, this is really weird. And then the next one, it was almost 
you know, weird because you woke up and you had nowhere to be. I mean, I woke up and I was like, well, what am I supposed to do for four hours before I leave the house? And yeah. uh, so that was honestly kind of weird. And then it was the same thing with the mud schedule since it got delayed. And um, we were just kind of sitting here like twiddling our thumbs waiting to go. And I was like, I just kind of want to go and get it over with already. But um, and then just doing the one practice was so weird. And I don't know why they keep changing, you know, the schedule, like after the yeah. race stuff and all. I don't really understand the purpose of that. But um, it's definitely been weird. Because, dude, you're sitting on a line for the heat race, and, I mean, you could hear crickets. I mean, there's yeah. no sound. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing. And I'm just like, dude, this is weird. Like, yeah. I can hear the flaggers talking, people in the stands, like the three people that are in the stands. Like, this is just <laughs> really, really weird. But You jump in the conversation. Uh, you talking about me, man. I heard literally. That. I mean, you can hear everything. It is so weird. Yeah, and just not normal. And then all of a sudden, you fire the bikes up and we take off. You know, like it's no big deal. But it's just that part has been the weirdest for sure. It's sitting yeah. on the gate 100%. Yeah, I imagine that whole tunnel experience is entirely different too. And and uh, the the limited practice is, is so wild. I mean, I've only I've only been in part of that schedule, like a mud schedule once in uh, yeah. Seattle. I think it was Seattle in like 2017. And we had a similar setup. It was like a 10, one 10 minute practice session or something like that. And I think yeah. my second lap around the track was my best lap. Yeah. Um, it's which weird, is, dude. yeah, it's nuts. And like, feels like a complete waste of time, but then you yeah. go out for the race and you're still, like throughout the whole, the whole heat race, you're still trying to, I don't think I jumped the triple until like the last lap of the heat race. Like yeah. I mean, still, I still made the, the main. Like, yeah, I yeah. didn't jump the, the triple until the heat race. I didn't do it in practice at all. And it's, yeah. it's just weird too. Cause I think that kind of contributed to, how I felt on Sunday was I just felt like mm. I never could get into a flow of like the track. I was making mistakes yeah. everywhere. And I'm like, well, I've only been on the track 20 minutes total <laughs> all yeah, day. Yeah. So maybe that's why, but um, <laughs> yeah, that, that made me just feel kind of, kind of awkward and weird with the schedule like that. But yeah, I'm not a, too big of a fan of just the one practice, but oh well, no biggie. Um, yeah. I was surprised how much the track came around, at least on TV. And I know in, in reality, obviously it's always way worse than it looks through a screen, but on the screen, it didn't look, as treacherous by the end of the main event as i had expected no. it looked like no, it came around no. quite a bit so in that regard i guess maybe it's good that they limited practice you know like they got yeah. a raceable yeah. track um but yeah it's difficult man it's so hard to adjust and get that comfort zone that's something i, yeah. I was never good at personally yeah it's it is honestly tough to kind of just jump in and go like that but like you said we were i was actually surprised but whenever we're sitting on the gate we took off for the first time and then you know march banks crashed and i noticed they were doing the red flag and we came back to the gate that's when it wasn't as good anymore because then it's yeah. pouring down rain on us on yeah. the gate and i'm like oh this is gonna be horrible and then may it maybe poured on us the first three or five minutes of the race and then it stopped and um literally towards the end it started to come around a little better like i noticed yeah. the ruts were kind of cleaning up we weren't sliding as much the whoops were still pretty treacherous but mm. um you could still get around the track and it definitely was not a full mutter it was kind of uh it was kind of nice by the end of our main event honestly you could find some good lines and kind of flow a little bit and you weren't just slipping and sliding everywhere and then by the 450 main it looked even better than, you know, when we were racing. So it came around a lot better than I thought. And I was pleasantly surprised by watching it for sure. I've, I've found that that, that in between stage, like that middle of the main event stage is my least favorite condition to ride like ever. Literally. Period. I hate yeah. it so much, man. <laughs> yeah, like, Hey, we tough. can, we can still jump it. Like we can still go fast. It just might yeah. not work. Like exactly. maybe I'm going to die right now. Maybe. <laughs> well, that makes it so scary. Cause it's like, if it's full mud, you, like San you roll Diego stuff. Actually. Yeah. You roll yeah, it. You're rolling just, everything. Yeah. And you, yeah. and you know, the guy behind you's rolling it too. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, you got yeah, the skis no out. You're good. Anything. Yeah. yeah. We're just trying to make it around the track, but when you yeah. can still jump pretty much everything, but oh, it's horrible. pretty muddy. It's like, it gets pretty hairy. Cause you're like, man, I don't know. Like you're on the edge of even making the jump and you're still trying to go fast and it just, man, it gets tough when it's like that for sure. I remember that, that same Seattle race that I was thinking of. I remember every lap after like the eighth or ninth lap of the main event, every lap I told myself, this is the last time I'm going to jump the finish. Yeah. Like it's so rutted. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sideways yeah. every time I endowed. I was like, this yeah. is the next lap. I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah, the guy in no, front of you jumped scary. it, and you're like, "All right, Dude, here, I I was, go. Yeah. I was like here we go." I was buried. Yeah. I was so far back, but I kept hitting it. Landed on the side of the track a few times. It was Squirrel City. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. scary feeling. I don't really yeah. like to be honest with you. And I, I'm really glad I didn't get to that point. You know, sure. where it was like that. And, Cause at first, I'm like, "Dude, this is San Diego of last year all over again." Like, this was is it that bad? Horrible. At San Diego, at one, no, 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 at no. one this, point, th this past weekend was it that as bad as San Diego? Well, at one point I thought it was because okay. in practice, 
it was like dry looking, but the transitions were pretty messed up. And the thing that I really don't like whenever it gets like that is they take a shovel in between the transitions and they'll shovel all that water because they're trying to make a little river for it to go off the track. Right. Yeah. Well, whenever they do that, it makes those insane like yeah. G outs at yeah. the bottom of everything. And it gets kind of dangerous because then some mud will fall in it and you can't see it. And then you hit it and you about die. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I, saw, I do not like the way I saw there that. was a, a gnarly one right after the whoops. It looked like in practice, there was still that double oh, there yeah. in practice that looked yeah. deadly. Yeah. Well, the thing that was funny about that was it was, it's funny now, but at the time it wasn't funny. was <laughs> I, I had just came through the mechanics area uh -huh. and me and Shane, we, we went around the whoops and I noticed he was right there. So I'm like, Oh, I'm going <laughs> I'm to get in behind Shane and maybe we'll ride, you know, a few, maybe a lap or two to, to finish this practice. And he hits that same section you were talking about where it was, there was actually three rollers there in practice. And for the race, it was just two and he hits it and hits one of those G outs and the bars just yank away from him. And then all I see is a splash, like just nothing but water. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what did you just do? <laughs> like the bars just completely went away and he just made this ginormous splash. And he was like, dude, I have no idea what happened. Like I just, all of a sudden was on the ground. And I was like, yeah, right that's, out, yeah, that's one of those G outs right there. That'll get you. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. That was funny. Um, yeah, that's gonna... that he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. No, no, nothing happened, so, so it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's going to bring us to, to uh, a part of our show, uh, our devotional dig, where our guest uh, <clears throat> jumps out and, and uh, shares their Bible, favorite Bible verse. Uh, Colt, would you mind uh, sharing that with us right now? Yeah, so what I have for you today is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It is, uh, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And that was a, um, a verse that I actually learned a long time ago, and it's always kind of stuck with me for some reason, but I was probably only 13 or so the first time I read that. And uh, I don't know, I was just going through that little period where I felt like I needed that for some reason, you know, it really kind of spoke to me. Like I think a lot of people maybe will have that verse or two that kind of speaks with them a little bit and something that you can really grab a hold of. And that was it for me. And uh, I remember discussing it with, you know, a buddy of mine that was um, I used to go to church with every, every Wednesday and Sunday. And uh, we kind of had the same kind of one here. And I think that's what made it even cooler for me was that was kind of his too. Uh, that felt like it kind of spoke to him a little bit. So uh, we could kind of sit and chat about that. And that was, that was a pretty important verse uh, for me. Definitely. I, I think uh, it's something that I, I resonates with me also. Uh, something I've struggled with too. Like, I mean, just knowing that uh, the, the grace of God is big enough to reach us where we're at, not that we have to be good enough to earn it. You know I mean? I think yeah, like yeah. that racing, that racing mentality. I mean, so I, I didn't really like become a Christian or, or get into the word until, I mean, I somewhat was, but not genuinely until I was like 18 or 19, I think. Yeah. Um, and so I had that racing kind of mentality really ingrained with me in me long before yeah. kind of a Christian mindset. And so encountering something like this where it's like, Hey, it is his grace that reaches you where you're at. You're never going to earn it. Like it is made perfect in the fact that you're weak and you're not going to earn it. That is grace. Exactly. exactly. For me, it's like, dude, I just gotta like, I gotta practice harder. Like I gotta work harder. Mm -hmm. I gotta get there. I gotta earn my way I and know. then I'll be, I'll be good enough. And then I'll be good with God and then heaven and then all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a verse like this really reaffirms to people like his grace is sufficient where you're at. And it's because you're, you know, sometimes a piece of crap or just <clears throat> not quite there yet. Even if you're not a piece of crap, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's there. Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of this, the exact same thing as to why it, it maybe kind of spoke to me when I was that age and something sure. that still kind of resonates a little bit. And um, simply meaning, you know, that that's, this grace is all we needed, you know, and that in those moments where you feel the weakest is when you really need to turn that direction, you know, because a lot of people, I think, get to that point where you feel like you have nowhere to turn and um, nothing to do and everything seems kind of hopeless and pointless. And for me, that was, I mean, you're a teenager, you know, you seem like you think your problems are huge, you know, back when I was 13, I was like, I'm the only one dealing with anything. And yeah. Um, you know, so whenever I got to speak to a buddy of mine about it and he kind of is struggling with the same things I am, typical teenage problems and, um, trying to understand what, what life really is, you know, or who you are as a person and what you want to do with it. And, um, you know, that was kind of something where it was like, okay, no, this is, this is it right here. You know, I need to, instead of turning away and trying to figure out something and, you know, overthinking the whole situation, you just look at this and you say, okay, I'm turning this direction. This mm -hmm. is going to lead me to where I need to go because I am struggling with whatever, and he kind of had the same exact thing and we kind of pulled each other along and 
Um, it was literally all off of this pretty much, you know, reading through this and, and understanding it together. And it was cool to have a buddy like that to kind of embrace that with and be able to take off on this journey and um, understand that we're making the right decision and we're not trying to just sit there and search for something that wasn't there because at the end of the day, there's never that one thing, you know, there's always something you can just go a certain direction that happens to find you. That's kind of what happened with me. Yeah, I think that's huge. Um, you know, in, in playing a, a role in Zach's uh, walk and him uh, getting baptized at one of our camps that, that we did up in Washington and, and hopefully Zach doesn't mind me sharing this story, but um, it was always, I'm not good enough. I'm not yeah. ready, right? Yeah. And it's like, listen, as Zach said, I – Straight up story outside of our office after a Bible study. Zach's like, mm. uh, I'm just not ready yet, right? Like, I'm not yeah. good enough. I'm like, you'll never be good enough, dude. I think like, you said you're yeah. right. I think the original response was that, you're that, right. That, I said, yeah. man, I just don't feel like I'm good enough yet to like be like a Christian by label. And baptism yeah. does that. John's like, yeah, no, yeah. you're right. You're not, man. A actually, I said, I probably <laughs> so said real. something like, yeah, you're right. You yeah. pretty much suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. And, and, and when yeah. we finally get grasps that that hey man we will never arrive we will never be good enough god's yeah. grace is the only thing that makes us good honestly um, exactly. we could have good 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 uh things that about us or whatever but we're never good enough we will never arrive and if we wait until <clears throat> we feel like we do um it's gonna be too late because now you're fooling yourself of saying, all right, now I'm good. I'm ready. I got rid of this and this and this. Well, guess what? Tomorrow you're going to wake up with more problems. Um, exactly. And it's not going to be good enough again, right? But in yeah. God's grace, he makes us good enough. Um, and, and, and that is where we need to be uh, understanding that we'll never be good enough. If we think we're good enough, you're fooling yourself. Um, exactly. That, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a tough thing to understand, you know, especially for, for younger kids and even yeah. for adults. I mean, especially when you grow up a little bit and you're looking at your own self in the mirror and you know, I mean, you know, your darkest secrets and, you know, stuff you won't share with other people and just yeah. whatever. And it makes you have this sense of like, well, I can't be this because of this mm. or I messed up this one time. So I can't be in this situation. And it's like, yeah. no, I mean, everybody has that, you know, nobody yeah. is good enough. You know, nobody is going to look at themselves and be like, I've done everything perfect and I can understand this better than you. It's like, no, I mean, everybody interprets it their own way. They have their own experience and it's a, pretty much just the grace that's taking us along this journey, you know, to understand yeah. really what your end experience is. And that's the most important thing. And how you get there isn't really the, the important part. It's where you're going. And uh, for me, that's what was pretty cool about even understanding what I'm doing with all of this on um, what the purpose was it's like well it's for an end journey you know like we're making our own little way there it's just your own little way and that's what makes yeah. it special um but it's hard to understand that you know whenever yeah. you're a little younger and you have all these problems that you think you're going through but uh at the end of the day everyone's doing the exact same thing you are you know it's yeah. just some people can share that better and some people can bury that a little deeper and uh when you're that age i think it's important to have people that you can really open up to and talk about that like i did and I was lucky, you know, to have a friend like that or people that were involved with the church that really helped me and kind of pushed me through a little period where I needed that. And um, I can say I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really blessed to have that because I know a lot of people don't and could really probably help them in their situation if they did. So I'm yeah. definitely lucky. Yeah, dude, good, good on you for for that at, at 13. Like I definitely wasn't thinking that way at 13, being honest. Yeah, like, man, I was, not yeah, even close. Way more, way more entwined <laughs> with the world than I was with with that kind of personal insight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I don't know really the explanation for it, you know, is maybe because my sister was very, um, she was very involved with the church whenever I was a little younger. And yeah. um, it was one of those things where like your buddies went, you know, and, and yeah. I went because I'm like, I'm friends with all these guys. Like, this is going to be cool. And um, yeah. I also want to understand what we're doing here. You know, like I want to understand my purpose and um, you know, kind of the direction I need to try to go here. And yeah. uh, that that's probably why I think I was maybe a little more, understanding of it and probably my sister too really just being like you you just have to have this this faith and understand that there is a bigger picture than what you're thinking just right now and i kind of struggled with that when i was that age because I, I just didn't get it i'm like i don't understand even what you're saying like what does that mean you know and yeah. so for her it, it was really cool because she helped kind of you know push me along my journey too and got me to a point where i could really understand it a little better and even the stuff I didn't understand, I just said, okay, you know, like it is what it is. Maybe I'll grasp it one day, but it's not going to stop me from feeling like I can go on this journey and uh, make my own little path to somewhere I want to go. So 
uh, that was pretty cool. I, I had a lot of great people around me when I was younger and helped kind of mold me, I feel like, and push me in the right direction instead of turning me the wrong way and push me down a path I shouldn't go. So I was definitely lucky. I think that's really cool. You mentioned uh, there are things that I just didn't understand, and but I accepted them right? Like, mm-hmm. especially at a mm-hmm. young age, that's, that's very like, man, I just don't understand it. And, and mom and dad may, in any certain cer- situation, it might be different. Right. But it's just like, yeah. mom and dad just kind of, Hey, it's okay not to understand everything. Uh, yeah. But a- a- as a young kid, that's hard, right? Like, oh, and, 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 and to be honest, I think it's even harder. I'll speak for myself as an adult to not have answers because I need answers about everything, exactly. right? Like exactly. I just need to know. Um, I know. I mean, everyone <laughs> does, man. They, they want to understand what they're doing. You know, they just need that one thing they can grab a hold of for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and, and faith is one of those things that I might not have all the answers to everything. Um, yeah. But I, I've been able to, to come to the understanding and realization, Hey, God is in total control and what mm-hmm. he wants you to know, you will know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I am at peace. Finally, like I, I still struggle with it. Like why Lord, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Yeah. And um, I, 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 I'm finally there where, where I, I'm at peace at most things. Um, mm-hmm. Knowing that I just might not have an answer here on earth. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to rationalize with that, but, um, I know God is in total control. Um, we have yeah. conversations on at our Monday night Bible studies. Why did I, why did I get injured or why did this happen? It's like, I don't have a good answer, but when we recover and we're healed, I almost guarantee you, God would, will reveal what he wanted through this term, time. Not that he wanted you to get hurt necessarily, but he's going to use this time for you to grow and to open your eyes to this, that, the other. Um, oh, yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and you will see what God is doing through this time period. Um, again, not that I think God wanted you to get injured, uh, but it happened, right? And, and, yeah, and bad yeah. things happen to good people, and uh, it's how we react from it and what we learn through those times, too. Yeah. No, I think that's important you bring that up, too, because it's just being being injured, I think, is the toughest thing in, in what we do, you know, because you're always looking for something. You know, you want that explanation, and nine times out of ten, there is not one. There's not going to be that good explanation, but it really, really – comes back on you whenever you look at it and you're like okay this is all perspective like yes i got injured and this is horrible and it seems like the world is ending but six months from now when you're healed up and you take off riding again you're like wow you know like this happened because of this reason almost Mm -hmm. everything that has happened to me i can look back later on and say man i this was all a part of the plan you know like i cannot say it was not a part of a plan there was this was the bigger picture i needed this for this reason and whatever that is, because it changes for everybody. And like I said, I, I do think it's all perspective and how you look at life. And um, if you understand there's a bigger picture, it's much easier to have a positive perspective on things. If you don't, then the negativity kind of drills you into a hole a little bit. So um, for me, that's, I've always been very lucky to think that way. And um, probably just the way I was brought up, you know, raised and uh, the way my parents kind of taught me how to look at life and the understanding of everything and to realize that there was that bigger picture. And if you hold on to that, man, it just take a lot of stress away out of your life. That's for sure. I know it does for me. You know, it, it takes away a lot of things that I feel like a lot of people can get caught up on pretty, pretty easily in life. And uh, yeah, for me to think that way, it's, it's, it's been a lifesaver really just that understanding to just be like, all right, I get it. You know, there's, this is part of something. I don't know what, but it's, it's a part of this plan somehow. And it, I know there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel for sure. For sure. Something I think it's a slightly different note, but I think really ties into the scripture well and is something that has like really been close to my heart just in the last few years since I stopped racing and since like really right before I stopped racing um, <clears throat> is that idea that God gains something from our weakness, right? Like his, <clears throat> his power is made perfect in our weakness. And uh, like for me going to school and, and studying scripture more and seeing kind of themes in the Bible and finding kind of this theme of God using radical underdogs to achieve Mm -hmm. like the highest of high achievements. Um, And I've talked with, with John about it before. One of my, one of my favorite stories is uh, in the old Testament in the book of judges, 
uh, this guy Gideon is, is leading a military of Israelites against the, uh, I think they're Midianites or something, but it's, yeah. he's massively outnumbered in this military battle, right? He's got mm-hmm. like 30,000 people. They have way more, right? And he has this, I think it's a person came to him that had some sort of encounter with God. And they're like, hey, Gideon, here's what I saw. Here's what we need to do. We got to get rid of all the guys that aren't pure of heart. We got to really dwindle them down. And so they do. They kick out a bunch of dudes out of their 30,000 and they get down Mm -hmm. to like a few thousand. And he's like, okay, we got to do it again. So they do it again. They get down to 300 core guys. So 300 guys now instead of like 30,000. Then with those guys, he says, okay, now we got to put down our swords and all of our spears. We have to pick up trumpets, pitchers, and I think lamps, right? And we're going to go out and Mm. here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it with these guys and these utensils instead of weapons, (laughs) right? Mm. And then Gideon goes out and they, they win the conquest wow. over the Midianites, this battle that they never would have had any chance with, with their original 30,000. Mm. It's like, hey, with the 30,000, I could have read this story and been like, hey, maybe Gideon's guys were really good strategically or like really strong. And so they, out, yeah. they outmatched them. Once you get rid of 30,000 of them and have 300 carrying yeah. land, there's yeah. no denying God was active in that situation. There's mm-hmm. no way for me to give Gideon the glory there. Like I have yeah. to say, wow, what an achievement God did through Gideon's faith. Mm. I feel like a verse like this, his power being made perfect in our weakness. It's like for me, man, like the, the, the more I look back and, and try to disqualify myself from achieving certain things, right? Mm-hmm. All the more reason God will use me to achieve it in the long run if I have faith in him and persevere through it. So mm. me in, in racing, that was for me repetitive injuries. But then stepping away from racing and going into academics, they were head injuries primarily that I had dealt with. I was like, yeah. man, I'm, I'm totally disqualified from being like an intellectual and going to school and like getting good grades. Yeah. I won't be yeah. able to remember stuff. I got half a brain. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, can't remember my street address. But like, <laughs> but then God uses those people for, for those exact things because now mm-hmm. that I've, I've done what I've done at the school that I did, there's no way for me to sit here and be like, guys, look what I achieved. Look at how hard I worked. It's, yeah. it's, it's purely reflects God's glory. Um, I think that's so empowering for people that, that struggle to, to put themselves in the game, right? To struggle yeah. not to disqualify themselves and be like, dude, I can't though. Look at me. Look yeah. at what I did. Look at where I'm at, whatever it is. Hey, dude, mm. God wants you to do it more than you, know, you could possibly imagine. Um, I feel like that comes through. Maybe I'm really stretching it, but I feel like that comes through a lot in this verse. No, yeah. I mean, I, I 100% agree. And mainly just because it's so easy for us to look at it from a racing standpoint, because you're competing, you know, you put yourself in uncomfortable situations all the time. And you get exposed weaknesses all the time, you know, like people can see that I have this guy struggle with this, this guy struggle with that, it's a weakness. And yeah. people don't like having a weakness or yeah. explaining, you know, that you have anything wrong with you. Everyone wants to think they're perfect, but that's in all walks of life. I don't care if you just have a normal nine to five job or whatever you you do, you don't want to put yourself in certain situations that will expose a weakness. And I feel like that's so important to do. How do you grow without exposing a weakness? And how do you have more faith and understanding without exposing a weakness and putting yourself out there? Because that's so hard for people to do. I mean, no one wants to be uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, in order to grow, understand yourself more than other people understanding you is by putting yourself in those situations. And, um, that, I think that's why it speaks volumes to me as well. was just because of that. I mean, I, I didn't want to put myself out there like that, but as soon as you start doing that, you're like, wow, I'm learning more about myself than I ever thought I could. And, um, it, it's all through the grace of God really, which is, which is pretty cool. I mean, I think that was pretty important for me at a young age and even sort of this age, I'm 26 years old and it still speaks volumes to me. So, um, I think that's pretty special. Yeah. yeah, that that and for it to stick with you for for that many years, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and and have that same type of outlook towards it, and and really grab a hold of it, and hold on to it, and and trust it, and believe in it, um, and and continue my journey, my walk through that, right? And knowing, hey, yeah. when I am weak, whatever circumstance that is, God's grace is sufficient, and it is mm-hmm. it is better than my own power. Um, mm-hmm. and, and truly having that understanding and in, in, in finding uh, a strength and, and trust in those circumstances, knowing that God is going to show up even when I am struggling. That, mm-hmm. that, that's big and uh, it's hard to stay there, but it, it's awesome to have that little thing there to, to be able to stand upon and, and truly believe. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people need that. A lot of people need it more than more than they think, whether you need it or not. I mean, that's some people just falsely admitting it, or, or some people acting sure. like they don't have an issue or, or a problem. But at the end of the day, we all do. Ours. Some people seem so much bigger than others, but each person has their own set of difficulties. And um, yeah, I, I think that's why it is so special that it's stuck with me for so long, and uh, makes it even even more so understanding of it, and just be like, wow. You know, like this mm-hmm. was 13 years ago, you know, whenever I first got shed light on this whole situation mm-hmm. and look at yeah. me now and still have the same feeling about it, which is, I, I think, probably the coolest part is the feeling it gives you the goosebumps when you talk about it and bringing you back to the first situation when you ever read the verse or whatever. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. And that, that speaks yeah. volumes to me. I wonder, I wonder, going kind of focusing on the, the, I mean, first off, absolutely. Sorry. I don't mean to like just move on. I completely <laughs> understand what you're saying, man. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> <All> good. <laughs> But I wonder, like, uh, kind of deviating back to Moto a little bit, if you felt some of that, like, underdog kind of side of it renewed um, in the time, like, right after you moved out of amateurs, right? You were, I mean, I was a couple years younger than you, but from my perspective, you were a guy at the end of your amateur career, uh, very much deserving of a ride, and then ended up going to, to Babbitts and doing Arena Cross first, yep. and then a couple of satellite teams, right, with, I think, Motorsport and then, or Motosport and then uh, Rock River yeah. Um, yeah. before getting to where you're at now. And it's like, man, if, you know, we look at your B year or your A year with Team Green, okay, we see the trajectory to where you're at now. Mm. The road to get there was, was pretty tough for you compared to what I imagine you expected. Um, mm. Did that give you kind of a, a renewed in this or was it totally different? I mean, could you speak to that? No, I, I definitely think it did because it was, that's kind of what I meant earlier about perspective, really, because the first time I looked at this situation, um, you know, in my career, this is what I wanted to do as a career. You know, I wanted to make money at this, but I loved it. And I put so much effort into it that I want to do this forever yeah. and, or as long as I can. And uh, <laughs> whenever it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, which was, you know, having my A year and then going straight into pros with this factory contract for three years or whatever, it yeah. almost is this exact verse because whenever you get done with that situation, that was my biggest moment of, of complete just self um, pity on myself and weakness by being just like, wow, I tried and it, did, it didn't work. You know, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. This yeah. is going to steer me way left. But when I looked back at everything, I just told myself, there is, is this such a big picture for me in racing? And I know there is, I had, I had faith in it. I understood that I needed to keep going instead of doing what I feel like a lot of other people would have done, just okay, well, I'm gonna go to college, which is gonna be my next move. You know, if I didn't continue to race, I was gonna go to school and figure figure it out. And there was just that little voice in the back of my head that was like, no, you you gotta keep going and you gotta finish this journey and finish what you started. And um, that was just the faith and and, and believing that, you know, and then it led me down this road, that road and that road and made this big circle to get where I am now. But I never would have picked that, you know, I never would have understood what was going on at the time. I didn't understand it, but it was the journey that was meant for me. And that's why I think it still speaks volumes to me is because it was not what I had planned. (laughs) It's not the way I saw, you know, five years of my life going. And uh, it it definitely was not what I originally thought. But now that I'm here, I'm like, I would not have it any other way. You know, I love what happened. I understand it now. It's made me a stronger person because I had to do this or that. And I didn't want to do that, but yet look at me now, you know, not that I've made it or I've done anything, but the fact that I am where I am yeah. is simply because of that. You know, I, I understood that bigger picture, that faith that I had in the process. And um, that is why in my spiritual journey too, it's important because it's the same thing. I go through this little moment of time, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, where you want answers and you want to understand, you know, God and understand the presence of what you're doing a little more and you don't understand it, but yet you continue to go on this journey. And then you look back and you're like, oh, maybe that was what that was for, you know, or maybe I can understand this better because of that. And it's literally speaks volumes with me and is almost exactly the same with my racing career. So I think it's easier for me to look at that um, situation now and even in my spiritual journey, too. And a whole lot of people uh, maybe need to hear that, you know, because life doesn't always go as planned and you can't always predict what's going to happen, unfortunately. And uh, but that's also what is the beauty about it and makes it so special whenever you get to the end or during your journey and you understand those first few steps of it a little more at the time you didn't, but now, now you can get it. So uh, I think that's what made it cool. And during my journey, why I am so happy with, you know, what I am and what I'm doing and, uh, and, and just having that understanding of, of life and uh, my little journey being special. Yeah. And, and with, with that, like you had this uh, from amateur days, right? Like 
you're a team green. So I'm sure like, it's like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get signed by Mitch at PC, yep. uh, do yep. this, this, that, right. It didn't go that way. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I went and signed with Babbitts, nothing wrong with Babbitts other than it's not what I had in, in, in my plan. Uh, yeah. arena cross yeah. was not in my sight, anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but this journey that you went on, right. It makes it, it, and I don't mean to put, put words in your mouth, but for me, I'd be so much more grateful for everything that I have today. Right. Because exactly. I know what it took. Um, and it mm -hmm. wasn't just handed to me. I worked my tail off to get mm -hmm. to the point where I am right now, where when you were 16, uh, you thought you deserved that, that ride. And you probably did being real, but somebody else got it. And you're like, pissed mm -hmm. off and it's like dude i'm better yeah. than that guy but today yeah. i'm way yeah. more grateful for yeah. what i have than if i was 16 and i did get that get that ride with with pc or whoever uh mm -hmm. it would have been right but we're here today and, and uh again i don't want to put words in your mouth or speak for you but i'm sure the gratefulness that that the guys put into the effort they put into you um you don't necessarily go yeah i deserve that it's like dude thank you like i know oh, how hard 100%. you work um and yeah. that might have been different if 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 handed to you right i think i think if you asked any of us at 16 we all deserved a pc ride yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, yeah. I know i know i felt like oh, I yeah 100 100 yeah yeah and that that's what is so tough though is dude i i can almost guarantee you that if it would have went the way that i wanted to i wouldn't be racing right now mm. i would be retired really? i would I not so. be doing what i'm doing there's no way i mean I've seen so many kids come through this system of signing when they're amateurs, you know, getting things a little too early yeah. and not saying that they didn't deserve it or anything like that, but they weren't ready for the opportunity when they got it. And yeah. for me, that's why it was so important to me. That's, that's my understanding of it. Now, when I look back, I'm like, I needed a few years. Like I wasn't, I wasn't even a man yet. I didn't understand anything. You know, I didn't understand what, even who I was. So, um, for me, I needed those few years to mature, understand how bad I really wanted to race and how bad I wanted to win at the top level and be on a team and do all this stuff. And um, that's why the journey was just meant for me. If I would have got it too early, I, I honestly don't think I'd be racing right now. I mean, I think it was the best thing for me and I'm so glad it happened that way. <laughs> I really am. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's awesome that, that you have that perspective, right? And able yeah, to look back yeah. and go, man, no, nah, it wasn't the easiest or what I wanted at the time, but it has made, made me into the man that, that I am today. And I'm mm -hmm. proud of who I am today. And I, I, I earned this rather than just yeah. being given to, to, to my name or whatever, right? Like I've yeah. earned where yeah. I'm at today. And, and I think our sport needs a lot more of that. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude, it makes it feel so much more special. And I, I'm really, yeah, like you said, I'm really glad it happened the way it did. And yeah. I feel like I earned it and I worked my tail off to get here. And, uh, yeah, you just want to take advantage of opportunities more. And even now, like, my mechanical will replace the grips on the bike or do whatever. And I'm like, bro, I remember paying for those. Like, this is so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like, this is great, you know. I'm never going to take that for granted ever again. So yeah. uh, it's, it's just a little stuff, you know, and, and definitely a lot of perspective and looking back and being like, wow you know, this was, this happened because of this. It was just meant to be this way. And that's pretty cool. That is awesome for sure. So cool, man. Well, uh, what's the plan, dude? You got, uh, what? Oh, almost a week, like six a little over less. a week. Yeah. Uh, you guys doing yep. any riding? You guys got a place to ride out there. Um, you guys just, just going to do some training. What's that look like for the next six or so days? Yeah, we actually, we rode yesterday. Uh, we found a little supercross track that was over by Miller Motorsports Park, that outdoor that used to be here. Um, yep. Have a little supercross track there. We rode yesterday. Um, so today we did a nice mountain bike. We'll probably ride Friday again. Um, and then a lot of training in between, just enjoying it. I, I brought my golf clubs. I might go play some golf. <laughs> and, Is that uh, training? Oh, yeah. I'm just training. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> I don't know if Swanee would have but that's all right are you walking um, or driving walking or driving oh, the driving. course we're driving. oh that's not training then man <laughs> golf golf done <laughs> right it might be because i'm out of shape but i feel like golf done right can actually be pretty tiring like when oh, you're yeah, giving man. it I, I, yeah. the first day i got here i we went on a mountain bike ride in the morning and i was like you know what i got about six hours to burn i'm gonna go play golf and i played 18 holes and i was yeah. so sore the next that's day i was funny. worked oh <laughs> absolutely worked but now we're gonna play some golf hang out actually me shane and the mechanics and uh whatnot we might go to a little gun range today and shoot nice. some guns, have some fun and uh 
just try to enjoy it, man. I want to go explore a little bit while we have some time off. This is a never situation where yeah, normally we fly yeah. on Friday, fly out Sunday. So now we're in a place for a month and I want to, I want to go see what it's about, you know, go explore a little bit and uh, actually really get to enjoy a place that we're staying for once. It's going to be pretty nice. So we'll definitely take off and do some fun stuff for the next few days. Uh, 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 before we close up, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. Two rounds left for you guys. Yep. Uh, you're in the lead. Shane's behind you. What's oh, happen? You can't ask that question. That question is ridiculous. It is. The, because ridiculous, there's no, but, there's no uh, answer. There's no okay, answer Shane, to give Shane, that's Shane's PC. in third. And I'm in the lead. Here, Sexton's in fourth, fifth, sixth. He's way <laughs> back. We taking yeah. the W? Just put it out there. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it really depends on, on Sexton <laughs> where he's at, really, yeah. to be honest. But, I mean, if he's anywhere behind, like, where Shane is, I'm going for the win, 100%. Uh, yeah. But if Shane's right behind me, then, uh, you know, we might have to pull some team strategy there. But uh, it is what it is. I really want Shane to win this title. I'm really pulling for him. If I can help, then by all means, by all means. So, we'll see. I yeah. hope the next few rounds go well and we can end it on top. That'd be nice. I, I'm, go I'm going – Colt one, Shane two in the shootout, and, and, and Sexton like five. Just so Whoa, the rest will take some... care of the stuff. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> like that idea. I like that idea of when you're when you're out front, you don't have to worry about getting involved in the points. You're not messing yeah. anything up. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Screw it. You guys can take care of it. I'll just go win this thing. All good. Yep. Be all yep. right. right. As long as we got a little <laughs> worry about here. yourself. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it'll be all good. That's, That's funny. funny. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, so we are going to finish up, but before we do, we always do a, a, a final five with our, with our guest. Um, five kind of fun questions, kind of uh, different, uh, not your normal motocross questions. Um, and Zach's going to lead that for us. So here we go. Yeah. You down with that? You ready? Yep. Let's do it. All right. So uh, first off, are you an aisle or window guy? Uh, window all the way. Window. Do you sleep? Yeah, you sleep on the plane? I like the window. Eh, not really. I don't know what it is. I just like being being by the window. But every now and then, you know, you got to wake up the guy next to you to go pee or whatever, count them all up. But I, I do like the window. I do. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Uh, fastest you've ever driven in a car and Ooh. why? That's a dangerous question. Man. Fastest ever driven in a car. Um, you don't have to give like a speed, maybe just the experience. But if you have a speed, yeah, you know speed. I don't know about fastest, but yeah. I remember just um, – being as, as fast as I could go in my van that I had uh, <laughs> going down the freeway and just had it to the floor and went down a big hill, got really, really sketchy, went up the next little spot. And then my actual shock on my van exploded and oh. I shot off the oh, road. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so I remember looking back being like, that's the fastest I've ever been in my van. And then bam, I was off the freeway in like five seconds after that. So that was pretty scary, uh, but I was wild, just going to yeah. go ride. So I have no idea why I was going that fast, but, uh, that's definitely the most <laughs> scary slash fastest experience I can remember for sure. Van's van speed is like a different kind of sketchy. Oh, it is. Once it gets going, it's gone. I mean, it's I, just, it takes off. Yeah. I remember going riding all the time when I was younger with uh, Carson Mumford and I would drive his sprinter van and the sprinter yeah. had a, a governor at like 73. It wouldn't go over 73 no matter how, you know, yeah. fast you were trying to go. So we would, uh, on yeah. the way home from tracks, whenever we get to a downhill, we'd get it up to like 72 and climbing and then I'd throw yeah. it in a new and, and, just, we free, oh, and we free, free wheel goes. past 73. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Scott Mumford's wondering why he's had to replace so many trannies. That would be me. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's funny. Uh, the, uh, the last Netflix series you binge watched. Ooh, Netflix series. Let me think here. Um, God, now that you ask me, I can't think of it. Are you a Netflix guy? Um, do, you, do you watch a bit of Netflix or not? So no, much? I do. So okay. me, me and my girlfriend, actually, we watch a lot of Netflix. Um, yeah. We get into some docuseries pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember what the one was. Uh, now you that watch I uh, that. Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> that was halfway in my neck of the woods, so I definitely did watch that. It was yeah. wild. Oh, my <laughs> God, it was wild. I, I definitely did watch that. I don't know if that was the last one I watched, but it probably was, honestly. And it was... It was pretty insane. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. It made Oklahoma look uh, pretty bad. That's for sure. <laughs> that We're not all like that. I promise. We're not. All like that. Uh, next one is: Would you rather look like a potato or feel like a potato? <laughs> After the off season, I feel like a potato. I think so. I I'd probably say feel like a potato. To be honest, who came up with these questions? By the way, I did it. I don't know, I like I'm, it. Having, I'm having yeah, fun. Like it, man. 
Listen, we alternate every week, and my weeks have been more fun. But, hey, whoa. I like it. I could say that, but you can't, man. I had that, <laughs> I had that elephant question two weeks ago. That was good. Um, last one, uh, Colt. Uh, what's the best way to spend a weekend in the off season? Oof. Best way to spend a week in the off season. So the past um, probably two off seasons, I rented a boat to go out on the lake with my family, and I have had an absolute squad out there. There's probably about twenty of us, and oh, wow. it is it is just so fun. I mean, it, I have such a blast every time we do that. I get to hang out with my family and just lay out on the water, and I, I love just being out on the water. That that's probably one of my most favorite things to do. If I ever can do it, it's hard to do it, but when I can man that's fun go back home we had a big blow up slide and everyone's grilling just talking oh, in my cool. front yard and, oh dude it was just the ultimate and then that's people awesome. were just stopping in randomly and just be like what's <laughs> up you know they see us on the highway and stop in and hang out a little bit so i mean I, I always enjoy my off seasons but it's just going back to oklahoma and, and visiting yeah. the family and really just you know taking that relax I, I really need that at times but that's that's probably my favorite awesome, awesome. i like it cool yeah yeah cool man colt we, we Really appreciate your time, man. Taking the time to sit yeah. down with us, uh, probably do something a little bit different than the norm, uh, sitting down with us. But uh, really appreciate it. Really appreciate you being open uh, to this. And uh, from here, man, go go get that W you're looking for. Enjoy your time out there in Utah um, and hanging out with all those guys. Just uh, take advantage of what you guys got. So, oh, it. most certainly, it was an absolute pleasure. I appreciated it, and uh, yeah, we'll have to do it again, man. I enjoyed it for sure. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. No, it's been awesome to get to know you a little better. Thank you. For, yeah, uh, most yeah, certainly. So Thank much. you, yeah. guys. Yeah. Good luck out there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Go have fun, bud. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Go get it. All right. Sounds great. See you guys. All right, dude. Thanks, bud. Thanks for tuning in to Rev Up. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. Check us out every Thursday at 5 p.m. And if you're interested in learning more about Panic Rev, head over to panicrev.org or follow us on Instagram. Until next week, I've been John Parkinson. This has been Rev Up. Stay healthy and God bless.